Greetings, greetings, greetings. Who were and what is a more by Irene Blakemore. I get this from the National Geography platform. And only because people will inquire about the more and the Moorish concept. So we'll say right here, a more or more, M-O-O-R, more, an open area of hills covered with rough grass, especially in Britain. And I'm of an example in a sentence like them would say, the York Shire Moors. So that is one definition of a moor. Now the article go on and say, if the term moor seem familiar but confusing, there's a reason. Though the term can be found throughout literature, art, and history books, it does not actually describe a specific ethnicity or race. Should I repeat that? It is said that a more does not actually describe a specific ethnicity, ethnicity, or race. Instead, the concept of Moors has been used to describe alternatively the reign of Muslims in Spain, Europeans of African descent, and others for centuries. So it's uh, the word more derived from the Latin word Marus, yeah, Marus. You can say Maurus. The term was originally used to describe Berbers and other people from the ancient Roman province in Mauritania, in what is now North Africa. So North Africa is an ancient Roman province called Mauritania. Over time, it was increasingly applied to Muslims living in Europe. That is the word more. More over time was applied to Muslims living in Europe. Beginning in the Renaissance, more and black or more were also used to describe any person with dark skin. And that is the beginning of the, the beginning of the Renaissance. Now it's in AD 711, a group of North African Muslims led by the Berber general Tariq Ibziyad. However, them pronounced that. Captured the Iberian Peninsula. Now, what is the Iberian Peninsula? That would be modern Spain and Portugal. So, where's the Spain and Portugal? That was the Iberian Peninsula. Known as Al Andalus. The territory became a prosperous cultural and economic center where education and the arts and sciences flourished. Over time, the strength of the Muslim state diminished, creating inroads for Christians who represented, who resented, forgive me, who resented Moorish rule. Now, it's uh, over time. The strength of the Muslim state, which is these Berber 
from North Africa. Diminish, creating inroad for Christians. Who are these Christians? These Christians were the very same Arctic people. Yes. Who resented the Moorish rule. So when I say more dark skin, no, they were Muslim. So any man who said I'm a more, no. Yeah, deal with Muslims. Yeah. This is why they must say Islam and all of these things. Am I tough? See what the correlation with Muslim and Islam is. If you know what, what kind of breakdown is written out there. So when the very Christians who resented Moorish rule for centuries, Christian groups challenged Muslim territorial dominance in Al Andalus. In Al Andalus. And slowly expanded their territory. This culminated in 1492 when Catholic monarchs Ferdinand II and Isabella I won the Granada War and completed Spain's conquest of the Iberian Peninsula. So this is when, at one point, we say from 7, 11 AD, North African Berber, dark-skinned people, call themselves Moors, go over Spain and Portugal and Europe, uh, conquer those locations. This is what the information I said. And then the Christian came in from the north and as time go by them gain dominance in Alanda in Al Andulas Al Andalas and Al Andalus and slowly expanded their territory so when them say Catholic monarch, this is really the Church of Rome. Yeah, just like all them would have the Church of England. And this very Ferdinand and Isabella get authority from them Pope with them papal bull and say anywhere where there is no Christian go over there, colonize them, and take them land, and enslave the people. So these people are coming from the Eastern Hemisphere. You understand? And eventually the Moors were expelled from Spain. So When people talk about more, them think of us dark people. No, sir. It spoiled up and switched up long time ago. Long time ago. By then, the idea of Moors had spread across Western Europe. Moor came to mean anyone who was Muslim or dark skin. Occasionally, Europeans would distinguish between black and more and white Moors. One of the most famous mention of Moors in a, the, is in the Shakespeare's play, The Tragedy of Othello, the Moor of Venice. Its, titu, its titular character is a Moor who served as a general in the Venetian army. In Shakespeare's time, the port city of Venice was ethnically diverse, and the Moors represented a growing interchange between Europe, the Middle East, 
Asia, and Africa. Again, Europe, the Middle East, Asia, and Africa. Nothing to do with the Americas. Nothing to do with America, this supercontinent. Despite his military prowess, Othello is also portrayed as exotic, hypersexual, and untrustworthy. A lascivious Moor who secretly marries a white woman, reflecting historic stereotypes of black people. What I mean by that? That means that these Moors like. women that originate from the Arctic regions, put it that way. And probably this is why we have issues now. But when I always speak, more time people get offended. Why? <laughs> because they have a foreign wife or they have a foreign husband. Yeah, man. Look around. A lot of these ones out here, they will tell you how much Aboriginal they are, how much of an Indian they are, and how black they are. But they never have the same kind of partner or companion or wife. Then we always have foreign wives. Yeah, them own people is not good enough for them. And I'll leave it right there. They have a next set of ones because of the biracial parenting, where you say a man look black, act black and talk black, but in mommy lily white or in daddy lily white. W I G H T W I G H T And these are some of the people who will come and say them a teach. But there's always an ulterior motive. No different from when I'm here on the island. I will say foreign people here having YouTube platform sharing information. A man like me will burn them and run them out of my land. So go back to your northern region. You can't come here, come call us as Jamaicans, Africans. You're out of order. And you can't come here, come tell you to claim Irish ancestry. You're out of order. This is the problem we have when these foreign peoples come into our region and establish themselves. And then start pushing false narrative in order to remove the organic, the original people, the true native of the soil. This is why I take issue with some of these people. But there's always a, a, an agenda. Don't ever forget that. All of these foreign people from the Eastern Hemisphere are here doing business in our land. And we as a people become their business. Literally, they can't exist without us. They're like parasites, these foreign people. But their point of origin is not this supercontinent known as America. Their point of origin is elsewhere. Most people will excuse this fact for their financial benefits. They turn a blind eye to this truth when they should address this kind of issue and let truth reign. They withhold this kind of information because of their personal biases. But I say let truth reign, though the heavens may fall.
let short rain ayah yeah man a lascivious moor who secretly marries white women reflecting historic stereotype of these black people more recently the term has been co-opted by the sovereign citizen movement in the united states members of moorish sovereign citizens group claim they are descended from moors who predated white settlers in north america if you're a moor from north africa berber oh you're gonna predate anything here in america you predate that over your side of the world over there in africa uh, you very moors were the one who facilitate the arctic people's invasion yeah man uh, when them expel the moors from spain in 1492 ironically this is when columbus came to discover a brand new world yeah a brand new world which is a supercontinent known as america for them it's a brand new world for us it is this old world ancient world these people have no idea who we were and what we were they, they were clueless about our existence so yeah for comprehensive there's a distinct distinction between a man was saying is a more cannot be american no man we are claimed to be moors with that moorish yeah forgive me with that moorish information yeah for go back to north africa that's where you start and you spread yourself all over europe until they push you back right back out of spain so when them push you out of spain where the mess you think you're going you never come on you go right back into north america right where you come from you understand so our people won't be deceived thinking that being a moor have anything to do with ethnicity or race it has absolutely nothing to do with that yeah man so it's a member of the moorish sovereign citizen group claims they are descended from moors who predated white settlers in north america and that they are part of the sovereign they are a part of the sovereign nation and not subject to u.s laws how can you being a foreigner in this location claim any kind of sovereign this is why they call him a sovereign citizen come on like me can demonstrate say i renounce it all citizenship so i can and i'm sovereign in my capacity cannot be a sovereign and a citizen at the same time impossible you understand a sovereign is is synonymous with a king there's no one above you but the most high creator there's no law above your law as sovereign and a citizen is always subject to some foreign crown or some outside entity yeah that grant them privileges that's what a citizen is 
in our world citizen, I would say is a little bit different from being a corporate citizen. Yeah, but I've not subscribed to being a world citizen either, but I, I, I have people that actually attain that classification. And usually, when you become a world citizen, they notify your local government of that status. Usually, the moment you're in a capacity where the local government or the crown state can make no money off you, can either say, claim you as their property. The moment they can do that, them not have no interest, them not have no profit for gain. So them now go promote your private status. You understand? When they present a world passport, it's private outside their jurisdiction. They close their eyes and act, act as if, hey, I, I, I don't know nothing about it. However, we can show document that, yeah, the very crown state by its own very nature have to respect this kind of instrument and they do i've shown images of landing stamp where the very passport has been used throughout the world not just in america not just in the caribbean area but they will never promote it why because they have no interest they have no jurisdiction or authority. So this is why when we say people having knowledge and still being a United States citizen, talking a lot of mess, I'll just say, hey, let's continue learning. At best, you should be a national. At best, where you remove yourself from the United States and at least stand on the United States of America where the United States do not have no jurisdiction. No different from the government of Jamaica has no jurisdiction over the non-citizen national of Jamaica. So, you know, these are the information where we choose to share. You know what I mean? Yeah, man. These are the information we chose to share. And sometimes it sounds stranger than fiction because people are totally conditioned, socially engineered to subject themselves to the will of a politician, not realizing the politician is just a man. Not God, it's just a man. Most of these politicians, especially on the island, were some broke people living in some broke down location. And when them going to the university and socially condition themselves, and sometimes by nepotism, my daddy a politician, so naturally me gonna become a politician. This is when them take on the job as politician. And the moment them go into office, they start to fleece the populace who put them in office. Literally teeth everything. And the people over the years, from 1962 till now, keep degrading from what it was. Yeah. And it's only the politician and their cronies benefits. Only the politician and their cronies benefit here on this island. So when you hear the term more, you have to tell people, sir, be specific only because of 
the ambiguity of that word. They can be talking about an open area of hills covered with rough grass. Or you can talk about, you know, some North African Berber or Muslims that went into Spain. And then you have the Christian Moors that later run away the Muslim Moors, conquer the Muslim Moors, take over from the Muslim Moors. Anyway, it's just information share. We're not going to really spend all day out here. Yeah, man. We just pass through sharing some information in an effort to bring clarity. So when me hear a man, I say, I am a more and more rich and more. I can say, F off and take that over there in North Africa. Get the mess out of this location with that garbage with that verbiage yeah when we say we are american indian and we say i will walk some people say arawak yeah it has everything to do with the supercontinent known as america yeah when you say Aboriginal, it doesn't just apply to the Australian Aborigines. Yeah, it apply to the original dark-skinned people of the supercontinent known as America. And now we can look and say a lot of these dark-skinned so-called Moors came into our location. Yeah, and these guys are what you call maroons. Yeah. And remember, you have the Christian Moors and you have the Muslim Moor. So if the Muslims was expelled, then it's safe to say, this is why I say, some of our people take on that Moorish temple science, noble Jew Ali information. These are the people who come here and create all kind of learning institution before the peel face man. Some of these Moors are Jesuits. God, them are come from that side with them Freemasonic organizations. They're so-called secret societies. So without clarity, yeah, we're going to have confusion. And we realize a lot of the common people like confusion because it's an agenda a lot of the agents who are working for the united states foreign congress and the british foreign parliament these agents yeah all they do is produce confusions and when you check some of them personal life they are pedophile yeah, don't think it's just a foreign man practice those kind of unnatural, unlawful conduct. You have a lot of these niggas who mingle with good people or at least try when they are complete trash. You understand? Yeah, their criminality is not normal. And most of these niggas find themselves in some kind of secret societies where some kind of guys fondle them. 
having them wearing dresses in order to have financial security or some kind of network or some kind of links. This is the issue with a lot of these niggas. Yeah. When you cannot manifest who and what you are, show the documentation, then we can say, hey, you're agent in all of your form. Greetings, beautiful. Yes, free people. That was my beautiful life partner, you know. But yeah, man, the confusion is when these agents, you know, when Babylon interjects some of these agents, these glorified agents, give them big platform and all kind of viewing. I, I you know, and all them do is mislead and deceive. Because they are agents. Yeah. Any man will say my Indian supposed to be free, boy. Yeah. And when you are Indian, you're not supposed to conduct yourself and participate in the Arctic people's you know, say, political community. You're supposed to be separate and apart. There should be no assimilation. Yeah, you're not supposed to have no kind of right to vote because you're not supposed to be a part of that society, that colonial society. You can't be an Indian and not talk about some foreign congress or regulator or you ask for anything from these people. Absolutely nothing at all you need from these people. These foreign people are here doing business in your land. And if you're, you know, unaware by way of the birth registration form, you become their business. They are parasitic in their nature. Yet my people find it hard to totally extricate themselves from this foreign system they find it hard it's impossible for most and i detest some of these cross-dressing agents some of these speaky spoky sissies with all different kind of alphabet acronyms yeah i detest you cross-dressing Vagabonds. Yeah, man. Because I'm an agent. I know all the Mr. Smith from the... What's that movie? You know that movie? Matrix. Yeah, man. Uh, all I know. It seems like in order for you to get an agent badge, you have to be in line with that J. Edgar Hoover type of behavior, cross-dressing sissy in office for your bun to the core. This is why our advocacy is freedom, freedom in and freedom in, not to assimilate
freedom. And that is it. Again, give thanks and praise to the mystic laws of the universe and its protective functions and forces in nature that guide our thoughts and our part in all ways that are lawful, correct, and positive. Fire burn out there. Burn them people. Burn them to them core. Burn them out there. 